every time you're going to start taking photos, I want you to remember these first three steps. White balance needs to be set, ISO needs to be set, and your lens needs to be clean. So let's see what I mean by that. First of all, what is white balance? White balance in photography refers to the ability to adjust your colors to match what the real colors look like. You may have noticed, depending on the type of light that you are shooting under, that colors don't come out true. So for example, when we're shooting in tungsten light, tungsten light tends to have a very warm color. It almost gives off a red, orangey glow. And if you're taking photos of someone who's wearing a white shirt during under tungsten light, their shirt actually would probably turn out to be a little bit red, not white. So we want to compensate for that by telling the camera the type of light we are shooting under. And if we're not doing a good job in telling the camera the type of light we're shooting under, it's not going to compensate very well. So for example, here are the same, it, here's the same image six times and in each situation we've told the camera that we're shooting under a different type of light. And I just want you to notice how the camera is compensating every time. And if we're lying to it, it's going to overcompensate and we're not going to have true colors. So here's my best example. Everything here looks blue and green because we've told the camera that we're shooting under tungsten light. That isn't the case. We're actually shooting under sunny daylight. But the camera's compensating and now everything turns out blue. So if you're forgetting to set your white balance, you're probably taking photos that are going to come out and all the colors are not going to be true colors. How do you set your white balance? You're going to have to locate on the cross keys the key that has the WB button on it. That stands for white balance. Some other cameras just have a separate button altogether for it. When you press it, you're going to see on your LCD monitor this menu come up. You will have the different options available. Each icon stands for a different kind of light. Um, the first one is automatic. Don't use that one. You have a better idea what kind of light we are shooting under. It's never as good as you being in control of the camera. Each icon represents a different kind of light. So the first one here would be daylight. The second one is shade. The third one here is cloudy. We've got tungsten, fluorescent light, and finally we have our flash. So make sure you know what kind of light you're shooting under. Set it accordingly. And don't forget, when you're moving from indoors to outdoors, you're going to have to reset your white balance. The second step is setting your ISO. ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. That doesn't really give you any hints as to what ISO really does. It determines how sensitive the camera sensor is to light. When we used to put film in our cameras, it was actually the film speed. A high ISO is represented by a number like 1600. It means that now the sensor is very sensitive to light. You're going to choose that when there isn't very much light available and it's considered fast speed. When you use a low ISO, like 100, it means that your sensor is not very sensitive to light. It's considered slow and you're going to choose that when there's plenty of light available. So how do you set your ISO? Locate the ISO button on your camera. When you press it, you're going to see this menu pop up in your LCD monitor and you're going to have a few different options. Most cameras will start at 100 and some cameras can go quite a lot high, higher than 6400. So ideally you want to stay at the 100. Um, that's for bright light, full sunny days. Anytime you're increasing your ISO, there is a cost. I'll show you what that is in the next slide. Um, don't use the auto. You're always going to do a better job at telling the camera than the camera having to guess for you. So here's a good place to start when you're trying to set your ISO. Reserve 100 and 200 for bright light, full sunny days, and you're outside. Set your ISO to 400 to 800 when you're indoors, when there's lots of light coming in from the windows and all the lights indoors are turned on. 
at any point when you're in a room when there are no windows or it's night, you're going to want to boost your ISO. So start at least at 1600. So is there a downside to increasing the ISO? Absolutely. And it's called noise. In the images here, each one of them is increasing in ISO as we're moving from the right to the bottom. The last image here has a lot of noise. It looks like grain and there's a lot less image quality. That is what happens when you increase your ISO. Sometimes you don't have a choice to increase your ISO. There just isn't enough light. But pay attention. This is the cost. You're going to have lower quality images. Try to keep it at 100 or closer to 100 if possible. Finally, step number three, check your lens. Always check your lens. The last thing you want to do is to take a whole day of photos and then realize that your lens is not clean because every single one of your images is going to be affected. So for example, in this image here, looks like there was a few dust particles or maybe some sort of water stains and every image thereafter is going to have those dots in it. The second image here, we've located it looks like there was probably a hair that was stuck on the lens and now we're going to see it in every single image. So make sure your lens is clean and that you're not wasting your time when you're taking photos. Thanks for watching.